we're getting dumb, we're getting hit. Yes, you're exactly right. So again, whether we're talking about Fukushima, which is a, a huge global threat, or a, a long list of other threats we face, if we can't think clearly, what threats can we possibly face? A, a short of nuclear cataclysm, the greatest and most immediate threat we face that's right here, right now, is global climate engineering is contaminating every breath we take. What other larger priority could we possibly have than that? Amazing. We're going to go to break, and I'm going to give you the full five minutes on the side to talk about solutions, what we can do, how we can get involved, what you think the most, well, briefly in the minute we have, what are the most hard-hit areas of the world from your research? Well, as you correctly stated, the Southern Hemisphere has been hitting now, hit now also. But when we look at neurological disorder escalation, the greatest escalation on the planet is the United States of America. Statistical fact from recent study. So we are being hit harder than anywhere else on the planet overall. Yeah, the globalists couldn't deal with American spirit and their world government, so we're being bug poisoned. Uh, exactly and, right. and it's just, and I, and I hope all the trendies and the bureaucrats and the geoengineers think it's funny because it's going to be you, your wife, your kids, you know, that are going to be dying. It's just, it's eugenics. It's eugenics. We'll be back. Fourth hour, Infowars.com forward slash show. Thank you for Spread listening the word about this GCN. affiliate, folks. Spread the word. Visit GCN Live. Life and death. It ain't a game. This is the final segment. I'm honchoing, quarterbacking. And Anthony Gucciardi comes in. Leanne McAdoo will pop in, as well as Darren McBreen. It's going to be a jam packed fourth hour. We're joined right now by geoengineeringwatch.org coordinator and one of the founders, uh, Dave Wigington. And uh, in closing, sir, you've got the floor to transmit more information to the people about one of the most important issues of the world. Another super secret Manhattan type project now so advanced it's hiding in plain view and beginning to come out of the closet. Alex, people ask, of course, the obvious question is how do we stop this? We stop this by reaching critical mass of awareness, which uh, your, your voice in this helps immensely. And as we do that, we start to make contacts that we didn't have before. We now have an attorney's team, five U.S. attorneys, two Canadian that are working on this issue. I coordinate directly with them. We have now nine, uh, about nine, ten weeks ago, I had an Air Force, retired Air Force general call me out of the blue. I communicate with him now regularly. He is working within his ranks. He's working within people at D.C. who did not know this was going on, as he did not know because it's completely compartmentalized. But as we start these spot fires of awareness all over in every arena, and we reach critical mass, there'll be a shockwave around the globe. And our site, I hope, is a, a resource for that. We have a YouTube channel. We have a free app. Uh, there's no other contamination on our site as far as politics or anything else. We're simply focused on this particular issue. But if people can use that for a resource, introduce credible data to others instead of just pointing at the sky and ranting, uh, that's a much larger help. And Alex, we like to... When people appeal to elected officials, agency officials, those that are helping to tow this lie, helping to, to hide it, if you will, in plain sight, as you stated, because they're trying to protect their paychecks and pension, appeal to these people, appeal to their, their sense of responsibility to their own children to come out of the shadows and start telling the truth. Because yeah, because right no amount of money's worth having a brain damaged son or daughter. No, no, exactly right. And, and what's important for people to understand is the contamination that we face and the damage done by climate engineering is extremely non-linear. It escalates rapidly as you reach the, the end of the contamination cycle, if you will. So a breakdown with planetary systems, life support systems, and our own health uh, starts to ensue very rapidly as these saturations build up. And, and I was about so to say, I've looked at the saturations in the soil. It's on record. Yes. Even mainline scientists say they don't know why it's going up. It could kill the planet. It's like the people running things are evil aliens that want to kill the planet. I'm not saying that's what they are. But imagine when this all finally comes out, if we're successful, and I believe we will be, it's going to be 100 times bigger than Nuremberg. But there was a giant yes. scientific eugenics conspiracy playing God doing all this. You're exactly right. And I know a lot of these academicians, USDA scientists that are still in the field, still employed by the government. And their unfortunate attitude is that they're, they're trying to protect their paychecks and pensions, none of which will matter very, very soon. We need to reach out to these people. We need to reach out to our military brothers and sisters so that they know exactly what they're participating in. If they don't participate, these programs can't happen. In regard to how much metal has fallen on us, to put this in perspective, Alex, soil pH changes in Northern California, we've seen a change of 10 to 12 times toward alkaline in the last decade. That takes a mountain of metal to make that kind of change. We've also, during the same period, seen a 90% decline, 90% in aquatic and terrestrial insects from the exposure to this metal, the intense UV, it's a virtual crash. If the bugs go, we go. 
And that's that's how dire our situation Good is God. right here, right now. Good God. It's total collapse of the ecosystem. They're going to use that to bring in a world government and eco-tyranny to fix the planet while they're the ones wrecking it. And I guess they probably got what they believe are reversal systems once they've gotten rid of us. But this is just insane. It is insane. But what we encourage again, we need everybody to help us to sound the alarm. And if we could if we could simply reach critical mass where the population around the globe or military personnel understand what they're participating in, that's our best bet for for bringing these programs to a halt. And time is not on our side. We're losing two to 300 species of plant and animal and insect a day right now, 200 a day. That's 15,000 times the background extinction rate. So the bottom line is, again, every day matters in this battle. It Absolutely does. Every day. I want to get you back up in the very near future to really lay out even more of your amazing evidence. Geoengineeringwatch.org. Uh, Dave Wigington, thank you so much. We salute you, sir. Thank you, Alex. Anthony Gucciardi is coming up with a roaring full fourth hour. You do not want to miss this information. Stay with us. Welcome back to the fourth overdrive hour of the Alex Jones Show. I'm your host, Anthony Gucciardi. Alex Jones just left us with a lot of news left to cover. We're going to talk about the study that you've heard about probably at this point. 72% of Americans agree with Trump in saying that America has lost its greatness, that we are not as great as we once were. I think that's an obvious fact, but we're gonna break that down and we're gonna open the phone lines for your take on how America has gone down the tubes, if you think it's gone down the tubes, and what you see in the front lines of what's about to come. And you know, I wanna break that down too, because at the same time, that people are saying America has lost its greatness. There's a big part of us, and I've seen it, right? I mean, with the theories of September collapses and everything like that, that really wants it all to finally happen. Because at a subconscious level, we're so sick and tired of all of it that we just wish it would come to a head. And I've got some stories that we're gonna cover throughout this next hour including some interesting ones like this one, Silent Killer, Germany showcases four-barrel laser Gatling gun. During this week's Defense and Security Expo in London, German defense contractor unveiled a new sea-based anti-drone laser system. And we've got some other stories too. We've got about this CEO that raised the price of an anti-parasitic drug that was used for HIV patients to prevent infection from $13.50 to $750 per tablet. And with all of this madness going on, it really makes us think, gee, I wish it would all come to a head. America has lost it. We've lost our minds. We've gone completely insane. And as a last bastion of hope, the listeners of this program, you know, we, we sit here and we think, wow, this is truly insane. We love humanity. We love the goodness in life. We love nature and going out in the woods and just seeing the beauty and animals and everything like that. But we hate the evil, the evil that is encompassing this country and sucking it up like a giant octopus. And that, I believe, is why so many Americans are fed up and just wish something would happen at this point. They wish at, at anything a come to a head. And I believe that that is what Trump is so successful in doing. He knows that spirit is rising up and that is how he is gaining such momentum. But to delve deeper into some of these stories, we actually have to think, we're going to talk about this further throughout the hour, how we've come to this point is understanding that sociopaths typically are able to climb higher than conscious smart thinkers like us that want to actually help humanity. And I mentioned the story about the CEO that basically bought, had an activist buyout of a pharmaceutical company and changed the price to $750 a tablet, which with insurance, the HIV patients or other patients that are taking this drug would have to pay at least about $150 out of pocket per tablet. And if you put that into perspective for a poverty stricken family, that's a lot of money and they're not going to have access to those drugs, theoretically, right? So we think about that and we think about those kind of people. And here he is actually a CEO of different companies and Forbes recently sat down with this guy. In this article that I just read before I came on air, I wanted to cover my lunch with, I guess you say his name's Shakreli, Shakreli, 
what we should learn from pharma's latest monster. Latest monster, key, key terms there too, because you think about Paxil already found that the metadata that made Paxil safe and approved by the FDA actually led to suicides in teenagers, just like Pfizer and Eli Lilly. Eli Lilly's Prozac, they found in the 1980s, pretty much did the same thing. But of course, they're not allowed to tell you about that. But let's talk about this guy. So here's the Forbes article. You already hate Martin Shkreli, the bratty former hedge fund manager who raised the price on a drug to treat infections in AIDS patients by 5,000%. Now it's time to get to know him. I'm not saying you should get to know Shkreli because you'll like him in the end. You might hate him more. He is very smart, but callow and possibly so sociopathic. Yet much of what he has been written about in the past week is unrecognizable. He's not a bro or a big-time executive, but a small player with tons of bluster who took Wall Street's ideas about drug pricing to their frightening extreme. And the reason I highlight that specifically is because it's the perfect profile of somebody that tends to rise up in a big corporate conglomerate, conglomerate specifically big pharma, and tends to dominate because they're willing to do things that others won't. Truly sociopathic people, and I'm not talking about callous people. We're all callous at different points in our lives, and we all say mean things that we don't really mean, or we let our anger get the best of us. But I mean truly sociopathic people that don't care if others die because of their actions or actually revel in it if it causes profit in general. Truly sociopathic people tend to climb the ranks, and their biggest weapon, just like they say the devil's greatest weapon is the thought that he doesn't exist, right? Well, the real greatest weapon of people like this, truly evil people, is their greatest weapon is that the average person cannot possibly imagine what a sociopathic or a truly evil person will do, including things like harming others in a serious, damaging way and killing people for profit. So time and time again, when we try to, you know, so-called so wake people up, they say, well, that's impossible. There's no way that these corporations would do these things. There's no way that these globalists would do these things. There's no way that the Pope could be saying these evil things. There's no possible way. They forget the element that they don't understand, which is actually willing to do harm for profit and willing to kill people in a measurement of gaining something. So I wanted to highlight that, and I think it tells us just a little, little snippet inside of it into the greater picture. And this is just a small scale example, but it's a greater understanding of how some of these things are happening on a major basis, like how they can really sleep at night. And you know, it's funny actually, this Shkreli guy was asked by a reporter how he slept at night after raising the price of these pills from $13 to 750. And he said, I take an Ambien. So that's how he sleeps at night. He takes an Ambien and goes to sleep thinking about the possibility of people dying. And the original article on that from NBC News is drug that fights complications of AIDS and cancer goes from $1,350 to $750. You know, the reason I bring this up, and I re the reason I bring up the four-barrel laser Gatling gun, outside of it just being really, you know, pretty, pretty interesting, is it seems like everything is getting wilder by the day. It seems like the so-called time spiral, which is the theory that, in the beginning of time, time moves slow. But as history progresses, the time spiral speeds up and everything seems to be a bit hastier, a bit swifter, a bit crazier, a bit more wild every single day. It seems like the so-called time spiral is in full effect these days with laser technology, different scalar weapons, all this crazy stuff that you hear about every single day. You think, when is it going to finally, you know, when's it gonna, when's it gonna burst? And that's that tension we all feel, that background stress, as I call it. Because you could be sitting there and you always feel that background stress because there's so much tension right now in the world. And it brings me back to this poll. 72% of Americans saying that America is not great anymore. We've lost our power. We've lost our greatness. We've lost our ability to be the best, which I agree with. It also reminds me, though, of this article that came out today. From Science Now, oldest decapitated skull in South America had ritual significance. This is an international team of scientists say they've discovered the oldest known beheaded skull in the Americas arranged in strange, possibly symbolic pose. And the reason I bring this strange story up is here we have this decapitated head with it was it was done apparently in a ritualistic style with hands on top of the skull. And the way they describe it in this Science Now article that it was a very bloody, horrible, disgusting beheading that was potentially common at the time. And I bring that up to parallel today and historical past. 
because as all the craziness continues with laser weapons,